So, if you noticed, I haven't even left the house. I've just been walking around the house in different sections and just been, you know, telling you my sum of what I've learned about the book and me just enjoying today because it's just nice out. I've been waiting for the, the somewhat warmer weather or this is hoodie time because I got sweatpants on and a long sleeve. And I've just been going out enjoying this day because it's just like so beautiful out here and we just forget to take the time to like just relax and we don't even you don't have to even take a fancy big trip maybe you just want to go home and enjoy the the house that you built into a home right because every not every house is a home right once you build it to a level of a home like like i'm in this little lounge here by the the grill table that we have outside the grill station and then we might have a little gazebo that i can hang in or the little sand pit or the garden like take your home and, and whatever house size it is and make it take your house and turn it into a home make it where you, it could be your your stay vacation or stay staycation right so anyway i haven't really left i've just been wandering around in different sections and just hanging out enjoying it so now we we make it to the legend of king arthur and this is book i guess six um and there i didn't really put an author for this because there's a lot of people that contribute to this story like like the book of the bible right so everyone contributes a part in how it's told and they have their own perspective of how it's said. Now you could argue me on this and say that, no, there is someone that wrote this book. No, there there is someone that wrote it, like the original story of it, but I just didn't name the person, right? Um, and basically this, or it comes back to the theme of the book. Um, some of the, the greatness about this book is that it was, okay, okay, it's a story of greatness designed by fate and the one of two stories told during the reign of the dark ages for the next 1000 years like that's just insane right so you might know what the dark ages is and i'm like i'm a history nut uh, i mean i love like learning different cultures and foods and trying different things i'm adventurous in that way maybe that's my greatness maybe i just i'm open to to experiencing i don't know right and uh the dark ages were basically like a time of like in Europe where technology did not advance and essentially it was like the like the reign of the Catholic Church and how like science and everything else that was happening before then didn't evolve because during that time of that thousand years they were it was about faith it was about your religion it was about you know the church at that time so for the next thousand years the only books that they had that was like a, a great book was the legend of king arthur and beowulf and i'm a huge nut for viking like mythology and culture i can't wait to go to norway i can't wait to go out there and just experience um their culture and just and, and you know just visit all of it i've been to england and I didn't get a chance to see all of it, but I, I went to um, Bath, um, like uh, Bath, and I went to like, I kind of like was in London for like a hot second, sort of, and like just enjoyed like Cambridge and a bunch of other spots, and just, it was just beautiful. That's all I can tell you. Um, and I hope to go back to enjoy some more of it. Uh, but one of the biggest things is if you if you're a history nut and you get to visit that place, that's like crazy, right? So essentially, Beowulf. And um, King Arthur, the legend of King Arthur was the only thing that was told for a thousand years. So this is why this is one of the most profound stories probably throughout time. And why so many books, movies, so many things, how it was altered so many different ways because people wanted to add to it because there wasn't really a big level of authorness and or ship. And they, they wanted to spin their tell on it of a story that they heard from generation to generation to generation because it's the only thing they had. And so this was short of how i wrote this so this video won't be that long um nobility is the equivalent to modern entrepreneurship and how i took it in the book because a lot of people like like i said before might look at fiction and say that it can't really teach you something or a fantasy it can't really teach you something that's a lie look at star wars it literally just like built our fantasy for how space is about to be look at look at us uh what um spacex and and blue origin look at all these companies that are coming out and about to just like revolutionize how we perceive world look at the the tv show uh the jetsons like any fantasy and form can literally like provide to the eleva elevation or revolution of mankind right and back then the only way you could as a commoner or someone who was of a lower class 
could climb to richness and status was that you had to be of nobility, which you had to take the level of military and, and the military then the most prized position was to be a knight. So the only way that you could gr grab status and fame and titles and land and richness and that sort of during that time was that you had to be a knight, right? That was the easiest way for you to climb. So that's why I said, you know, nobility is the equivalent to modern entrepreneurship. Th today, if you are an entrepreneur, you are literally like a knight amongst people, right? It's kind of cool. Um, here another car comes by. Um, the forces of nature will make a series of tests meant to create barriers of obstacles to stop you right and you could probably kind of perceive that a, a lot of different ways and that's why i said this is going to be really short because i only wrote one more thing because i've heard this story so many times i listened to it it does teach you a lot of different things and you know you got to be like this this is like the one piece i could tell you in a sentence if you believe you're destined by fate for greatness then prove it that's it like if you believe that you're meant to have this lavish lifestyle or you're meant to be a doctor or you're meant to you know be this amazing mother or, or you're meant to be this you know wonderful brother or whatever it is then prove it and that's basically the legend of king arthur because you know i'm gonna tell a little bit of the story and most people already know it's basically you know uther pendragon um it, it's a lot about it but basically um uther pendragon um the main character at, at the first start of the story and then it goes to king arthur he fathers a, a child and then there was some kind of prophecy that was going on that uh his daughters were going to eventually like kill him so then they he tried to like um you know get rid of him in a sense to give him a better life and opportunity to actually grow up and live and he grew up as like a steward uh for this like knighthood ship in a small like poor town and then he literally worked himself from mud even though he was of nobility and he was a prince and a king in the making that he lived a life of lesser status than what he was born into and he literally rose from the mud got to a stewardship um was like you know working for this knight um learning as an apprentice by a master and he like found the legendary store a uh, sword which wasn't the excalibur store i think the the, Exc the excalibur sword was the sword that was passed from the lady to lake the other store i forgot the exact name of it. it starts with like a c or something and that was the sword that was actually in the stone that he pulled out because the knight that was fighting broke his sword before and he was like find me a sword so he went out and searched for one and that was the sword that he found he pulled it from the rock gave it to him and he was fighting and he said after he won the battle he felt like the, it was powers from the sword and then when he looked at the 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 engraving on it it said that you know the old, old story whoever pulls this would be you know known by fate going to be king of this land and then they all like bowed down to king well arthur at the time and then you know recognized him as their uh rightful heir and prince to the kingdom and then he was like oh snap now i'm king like I, well i will be king and then like you know since he rose himself up became you know it was a knight um became this amazing king ruled by his just way what he thought was right and there was a lot of different obstacles in his way and things that ultimately like he died from because of like not being able to like clearly see not be focused who who you should trust and it was just a lot of different like playful things inside the story that if you watch any of the movies or tv shows and read the book or listen to it you can kind of pull your own element out of it and basically the thing for me was like if you're meant to be great then prove it and he was like essentially he knew he was meant for greatness and literally by definition was going to have the highest status in the country as prince and king but then he actually proved it and wasn't just actually born into it that he could be great because not every king who has a son is going to be a great king right that's why we have like the bad eras of kings and bad ruling and management um but he literally proved that he was great and he was meant to be great so if you're saying that you're meant to for greatness then prove it